Good morning. We're glad you've joined us for the Sunday morning service of Tusculum Hills Baptist Church, a caring and vibrant church that offers God's help to all people. We invite you to join us now for a special message from God's Word from Pastor Paul Gunn. We're going to continue this series in the Hall of Faith, the faith of Enoch, starting with verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Enoch is also mentioned in Genesis chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. The scripture says this, when Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. After he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Together, Jared lived a total of 962 years, and then he died. I wonder how many years he drew Social Security. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. All together, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God and then he was no more because God took him away. So that's the account of Enoch in Genesis. I read to you the scripture about Enoch and his faith in Hebrews chapter 11. He's mentioned again in Luke chapter 3 in a genealogy study. And he's mentioned again in Jude verses 14 and 15. Well, many years after Enoch had come and after he was gone, many, many years, and about 300 years before Jesus came, a group of people took the Hebrew scriptures and translated them into Greek. And when they got to this passage, they used the term, God took him. And they took that from the, the, the uh, they, they turned it, the Hebrew word translated into the Greek word, metatithemi, meaning moving from one place to another. And tr later it was translated into English the way that we have it. So the Greek version of the Hebrew version says that God took him from one place to another place. Enoch is one of the few people in the Bible that never experienced death. And there are several things today that I want you to know about Enoch. First, Enoch was the original prayer walker. We read several times in the scripture that Enoch walked with God. Now, a few years ago, I heard the term prayer walking for the first time. And this became popular in mission circles. Uh, people talked about prayer walking as if it was some type of new thing, walking and praying. And occasionally I'll read about a, a mission team that went to some city in the U.S. or somewhere in the world, and they prayer walk. Well, when I heard about prayer walking for the first time, I did not know what this was. I thought this was some type of new program, some type of new ministry. And I remember asking a friend of mine, what is prayer walking? And he said, well, you pray while you walk. And I said, well, that, I don't think that's anything new. But it was kind of termed as something new. Enoch did it a long time ago. Enoch walked with God. And one day on one of his walks, he was closer to God than he was to people. So God just took him home. People searched for him and he couldn't be found anymore. Now the Bible uses the word walk numerous times to indicate spiritual meaning. It indicates a person having a relationship with God or, and Jesus uh, and the Holy Spirit. We hear walking with God, walking with Jesus, walking in the Spirit. 
And this spiritual metaphor is used in the songs that we sing. Listen to these songs about the walk. These are just the ones I thought of quickly. There are probably a lot more. Walking in sunlight all of my journey. And he walks with me and he talks with me. Just a closer walk with thee. We will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Everywhere, anywhere, anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. So there are five songs that I thought of in about a minute or two about the walk. This word walk being used as a metaphor to illustrate a person's relationship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We know that walking means putting one step in front of the other. And so walking with God means a continual moving forward, one step at a time, a lifelong journey that starts with the first step, yet has no ending. The next thing I want you to know about Enoch is this, is that Enoch's testimony explained where he went. While preparing this message, I thought about Enoch's testimony as a believer. I don't believe that we have any scripture that gives an eyewitness account of Enoch's being taken by God. But his walk of faith with God that was so strong that when he could not be found, people knew what happened to him. Now think about how strong that testimony must have been. The Bible says that uh, before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And apparently everyone knew that he, believed, uh, he pleased God because think about it. The day that he could not be found, people knew what happened because there was no other possible answer. Now pardon if this sounds a, a bit cliche, but it is true. Uh, do you know that we really preach our own funerals? We preach our funeral by the way that we live. I wish I'd kept up with all the funerals that I've attended and preached through the years. Eulogy means good words. And many times a funeral has two parts. It has the eulogy, good words about a person, and then a sermon. And depending on the situation, there may be a, a eulogy and not much of a sermon, or there may be a sermon and not much of a eulogy. And the best case scenario is, is one that's balanced and that a person's life had enough content that the eulogy and the sermon can be intermingled. With Enoch, he preached his own sermon with his life. And in the end, his funeral was simply this. He walked with God and God took him. Everyone knew what had happened. Well, that would have been an incredible living testimony. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a bit of a, a poetic license and tell you how I understand the story of Enoch in my mind's eye. And I'm going to combine this verb of walking with the spiritual metaphor of walking with God. I picture people in a community who all knew each other. Uh, Enoch was an old man, so he knew everybody, and everybody knew him. I can see Enoch now as he goes on one of his walks and people say, well, there goes Enoch. You know, he walks with God. And then I can just hear someone in my mind's eye replying, yep, and someday he's going for a walk and he's never coming back. And then the day that he didn't come back, everyone knew why. So we have... Uh, Enoch as the original prayer walker. We have Enoch's testimony that explained where he went. And third, we have Enoch's walk of faith that carried over to his great-grandson. Now listen to this. Enoch had a son named Methuselah. As you know, Methuselah lived longer than any other person. Methuselah had a son named Lamech. And Lamech had a son named, does anybody know? Noah. Years later, it would be Noah who had such a close walk with God that God would lead him to preach repentance to all people while he built the ark. 
And no doubt, the testimony of Noah's great-grandpa was still alive in Noah's mind as he preached every day with no converts and as he labored every day with very little help just from his own family. And he knew that God, he knew what God was capable of because he knew his great-grandpa had been taken by God. And he knew where his great-grandpa was and he believed in that same God. And so through him, through Noah, God saved humanity. And then if you look in Hebrews chapter 11, the next person that we read about in the great hall of faith is who? Noah, the great grandson of Enoch. Now, let's go back to the purpose of Hebrews chapter 11 and its mention of Enoch and others. Look in verse 6. And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith. Faith. Faith is the enemy of fear and it is faith that pleases God. So we must all be exploring new challenges of faith in our lives. And if you want to please God, you've got to take the next step of faith. What is the next step of faith for you? The next step of faith for you may be completely different than what the next step of faith is for me. My, step of, my next step of faith may be different than the youngest, newest Christian here. But the Bible tells us that faith pleases God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, Enoch is not the only one who never experienced death. There are some others in the Bible. There were some who Jesus brought back to life, and there were some that the the disciples brought back to life through Jesus' name. But the Bible tells us that there will be others who never experience death. Listen to this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 says this. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now you know it's very possible that people, some of you, some of us, right here this morning, it's very possible that people that are here and people that are watching by television could be those who never die because Jesus is going to return one day and like Enoch, he's going to take those who have a walk with him to be with him. Now there's a prerequisite though to being part of this group that never dies. And here it is. You've got to have a walk with God. And I ask you today, how is your walk with God? Do you have a walk with Him? Is it a walk of faith like that of Enoch? Maybe you need to start with that walk today with God. It begins with the first step. It begins with the first step of faith. Say that with me. It begins with the first step of faith by saying something like this. I will start this journey right now with the first step. <laughs> and I found that if we take that first step, He walks the rest of the way with us. And He never quits walking with us. Believers that are here today will tell you the same thing. We all have life stories about how God has sustained us through the most difficult, through the most challenging times, don't we? 
And it's all because of a walk with God that has a starting point, but it has no ending point. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we, we ask you to help our lack of faith. Help us to be people of faith. Help us to learn from the example of Enoch who walked with God. And for those today who have not taken the first step of faith in following Jesus as Lord and Savior, please quicken their hearts today. In Christ's name, amen. Please look at me if you would. By faith, you can know this God that Enoch knew. God provided a way for people of today to know him through Jesus. And right now where you are, listen to me, these are important words. Right now where you are, surrender. Let go of your pride. Let go of your resistance. Take that first step of faith today. And ser several of us will be down front here to receive you. If you want to be saved today, Jesus will save you. And others that are here today may already know Jesus, and you may want to join our church and membership, and this is how we do it. We ask you to come forward and profess Jesus as Lord. Let's stand together as, as Jerry leads us. You come now during this altar call. <laughs> أحبائي المشاهدين قد إيه كانت نهضة الطبيب العظيم في العام الماضي رائعة ممتعة المكان كان ممتلئ وقد إيه فرحنا بالترنيم وفرحنا بالكلمة وفرحنا بالشركة وده شيء رائع الشهر القادم عندنا برضو النهضة مرة تاني لذلك رجائي من كلكم أيها المشاهدين في جميع أنحاء العالم إنكم ترفعوا مدينة اللي فيها النهضة ناشفل كما يقول الكتاب الحقول بيضة الحصاد وقد إيه في احتياج في هذه المدينة إن الناس تيجي وتكون في النهضة أرجوكم صلاة خاصة من أجل إن الرب يجيب الناس وأيضا قد إيه الناس دي تحتاج إنها تنمو بعد كده لذلك أسيس الكنيسة دي الأسيس بول قال وفر خدمة كل أحد صباحا باللغة العربية مش بس نيجي النهضة وبعدين بقية السنة ما يبقاش لنا علاقة مع الله لا مهم قوي قوي إن تكون نهضة مستمرة في حياتنا الرب يبارككم ويشجعكم ارفعونا بالصلاة أمام الرب إنها تكون نهضة روحية حقيقية مش تنتهي بانتهاء الاجتماعات ولكن تستمر حتى النهضة القادمة العام اللي بعده ربنا بارككم وإلى لقاء سلام الرب الذي فوق كل عقل يحفظ قلوبكم وأفكاركم الأسيس رؤوف غطاس